I am Anil Kumar and now let us continue with finding limits where we get indeterminate form. The question here is evaluate limit when x approaches 1 for 6th root of x minus 1 divided by 3rd root of x minus 1. If I substitute 1 here, what do I get? I get 1 6th root minus 1 divided by cube root of 1 minus 1. You know, these roots are also 1. So we get 1 minus 1 over 1 minus 1, which is 0 over 0, undefined term. It is basically indeterminate form. So in such forms, what we should do? We could now solve this limit by using uh, one of the two methods. One method is we could rationalize, or, or we, could, we could do actually three methods. We will prefer factor. Factoring is a good method here, or variable substitution. So these are the two methods which could be employed here to solve such equation. Let me show you both the methods in this particular video. You can adopt whichever you feel like. So let us do factoring first. Now try to see the question as, uh, as what? As what is the sixth root as compared to third root? Sixth root is square of this root. So let's do factoring first. We could write this question as limit. X approaches 1. And I could write the, the sixth root as, uh, let me write this as, uh, okay, let me put this as sixth root itself for the time being. Uh, I wanted to write 1 over 6, but that's fine. And uh, I'll write this as third root as sixth root squared. You get the point. So square of this squared. So that is how you could actually write this third root. Let me make this point very clear on, on separately. That could create confusion at times. So what we are doing here in the denominator is we are kind of writing uh, x to the power of 1 over 3 as equal to x to the power of 1 over 6 whole square. You understand? So when you multiply by 2, you get this as equals to x to the power of 2 over 6, which is x to the power of 1 over 3. You get this idea. So I think it's very important to understand this part, how I wrote this. So that is the exponent form of the same thing, correct? So that is how you could think that the denominator part has a square term in it, correct? Now we will continue. I hope this, this point is very clear. Now we will continue and we will factor as difference of squares. So it is x approaches 1 and we 6th root of x minus 1 and we could write this as 6th root of x plus 1 times 6th root of x minus 1. You get the idea. So at this stage, you could cancel these two, correct? So the whole idea was to find a common factor in numerator and denominator. So once you cancel, we get 1 over 6th root of x plus 1. And now you can substitute 1 here, right? So we get 1 over 6th root of 1 plus 1, which is 1 over 1 plus 1 or equals to half. So that is your answer for the given limit, right? So this is factoring. The other method is variable substitution. In variable substitution, what we will do is we'll say let sixth root of x be equal to a variable u, correct? In that case, if I square both sides, what do I get? I get cube root of x as equals to u square. You get the point. Correct? And another important thing which you have to do is what happens when x approaches 1? When x approaches 1, in that case, the sixth root of x also approaches 1 and therefore, therefore, u approaches 1. You get the point. So, substituting u for sixth root of x will change the situation and we can rewrite our limit as as limit u approaches 
1, sixth root is u, so we get u minus 1 in the numerator, and in the denominator, cube root is u square, so we get u square minus 1, you get the idea. Now you could factor u minus, u approaches 1, u minus 1 in the numerator, and in denominator be u plus 1 times u minus 1. So now we can cancel out the common factor which caused this, right? So what we get here is limit u approaches 1, 1 over u plus 1. Now substitute 1 for u, so we get 1 over 1 plus 1, which is same, half, correct? So you get exactly same answer. So that is how you would actually solve this particular question, correct? You could have also adopted the method of rationalization. That is to say, at this stage, the conjugate is what? So you have to do find the square, right? So you could multiply and divide by conjugate of numerator. If you do that, you could actually uh, solve the same question, correct? So the whole idea is to somehow get rid of the common factor and any of those methods could be adopted. So as an exercise, what I'm leaving here is the third method, which is rationalization. You can adopt this method also and check your result. That is to say, you can multiply and divide both by the conjugate of the numerator, right? So if you do this, then the numerator will be difference of these two. Do you see that? They cancel out. And then you're left with here this power portion, which will give you 1 plus 1 as 2 as your answer. So that could be the third method. So these three methods could be adopted whenever you have 0 over 0. And of course, in depending on the situation, one method is better than the other, right? So, so use these methods and get used to them so that you can solve similar questions easily. I'm Anil Kumar. Subscribe to my videos and learn different ways of solving questions. Thank you and all the best.